This is In-Depth. For those who know Evansville Police Officer Philip Smith, it is good news. It's good news for the community. He's one of 23 officers in the nation to receive the Attorney General's Award for Distinguished Service in Policing, a top honor. Tonight I talked to Officer Smith. We tried to put into perspective not only his high honor, but why he's earned it during this most troubled year. As expected, the conversation was serious and at times lighthearted. Thanks to Phil. Well, Officer Smith has run the table from to serve and protect to the risk that goes with it. He joins me now and hope you're doing well tonight, Phil. Uh, first, I just want to ask you the obvious question. Your feelings considering this high honor that you received last week? Oh, I, I tell you what, Brett, I, I've not been uh, that emotional. A, a joke, I've not been that emotional since last season's uh, The Bachelor. <laughs> 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 you know, you would have to you would have to slip that in on me, okay? <laughs> just, I was overwhelmed with emotion and uh, and gratitude, humility, uh, to be honored by the attorney general, the the actual top law enforcement official in the entire country. Um, I mean, it is beyond you know measure, and to share that with my family and closest friends. Typically, they would send us to Washington D.C., but I couldn't think of a better uh, a better venue than Glenwood Leadership Academy. Uh, to share that with those who, who really uh, meant a lot to me. And the fact that this happened in this, I often call it the lost year, uh, a very tough year on everyone, but especially for law enforcement, uh, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and the division in our country. What are your thoughts about that, Officer Smith? Uh, and some of those images, I would assume that you watched, as we all did, had to hurt. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, we, we're at a point in our country where uh, the narrative has become, you know, community versus law enforcement. And uh, I really don't believe that it should be that because law enforcement is, in fact, a part of the community. Uh, we shop at the same shopping centers. Uh, we go to the same barbers, you know, some of us that, that, that can. So, uh, it, you know, we're, we're definitely ingrained in our communities and no one dislikes a, a bad law enforcement officer like law enforcement officers. So we're all on the same page on those things. I think it's a matter of coming together as a community, as a nation, and, and just being open and having open dialogue. I say it all the time, you know, family members have to have conversa tough conversations, and we in this country, we are family. And you know, you were speaking, uh, having conversations at that table, and often at that table in our homes are kids. And my goodness, what a year to be, let's say, a six or seven year old child uh, trying to figure all this out with COVID and everything else. We're going to show some video of uh, cops connecting with kids in those uh, trips uh, to Disney World that uh, you made. How do you talk to our kids about what they see in these very strange times? Well, the first thing is I, when I talk to any kid, uh, I look at them like they're my own. Uh, that's number one. I, and that's something that I learned from my parents. That if you're a parent to one, you're a parent to many. And, you know, discussing uh, with the kids and being honest and having an open dialogue with them is equally as important. Uh, what these kids are seeing about law enforcement on the news a lot of times uh, is negative. Well, we give them an up close personal look and give them an opportunity to meet us, to meet the people, the person. Officers take risk every day, uh, but the coronavirus has really added to that danger. Yeah, 2020 has been a strange year, Brad, and I, I want to give uh, kudos to uh, the administration of the Evansville Police Department as well as community leaders for supplying our officers with, uh, with gloves, hand sanitizers, and masks. Uh, so that we can be equipped best we can to, to fight this terrible disease, the sickness that uh, people are dealing with. But it, 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 and for me especially, Brad, with my role in the police department as special projects coordinator, being a part of the community, uh, such a big part of my job, I'm not able to interact with a lot of folks like I normally get to do. And so it's been very challenging to keep those relationships uh, afloat that we have. You know, we have community partners that we do coffee with the cop or go to barbershops and do chops with cops and all these things that we, you know, are accustomed to doing so that we can build a platform uh, to, to reach out to our community and to reach out to these kids. We're not able to do, and COVID has been a big part of that. But uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, cross the, the finish line and get something to where we're we're all getting healthy again and, and getting back to normal. Recruiting officers, law enforcement officers, that has been a huge challenge. And why has that been so tough, especially during the past few years? 
Uh, you know, I, I think it's it's a it's a lot of things, uh, Brad. You you have uh, first of all, education in this country is so so far in advance. Kids have so many opportunities, like right out of school. You know, when I was growing up, the thing was you have to go to college. Well, now there's a lot of trade things. I've seen something uh, with the EVSC uh, called the Ramp Program, where kids are actually working at Ameriqual and then getting credits for school. I mean, it's amazing stuff out there and there's also what we talked about earlier what you see on the news you know it, 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 it's not as appealing as it used to be and uh when you see those things on the news and the recruitment aspect we've kind of in the law enforcement profession we've kind of you know stood by and let recruitment pass us by uh in the past word of mouth was the best way to get a police officer i'm an officer because my dad was one or his dad was one well that's not the case anymore so now we have to learn how to get those non-traditional uh, folks uh, in our offices that want to be police officers. Um, I myself came from a background of education. I worked in the uh, Evansville Vanderbilt School Corporation for a number of years before becoming a police officer. So I wasn't that traditional, hey, I'm going to be a cop. I always wanted to be a cop person. And and that just takes me to the next question, Phil. What was the what was the turn, the abrupt turn, to become a police officer uh, working with uh, within the education system? Why did you become a cop? Why did you want to do this? Well, yeah, well, so I worked with some off-duty officers who worked in the school corporation, and uh, what they told me from watching my interactions with young people was that, you know, hey, Phil, you might make a good cop. And, you know, I never thought I would because in my mind, being a police officer was uh, something that I totally was not. Uh, so an officer got me to go on a ride along with them, and... I realized that being a police officer was person-to-person -person interactions. That's what it was really about. It was about making connections with people and talking to people and helping when you can and, and trying to do right by people. Well, once again, uh, congratulations on a well-deserved honor to thank uh, you're one of a couple of dozen police officers in this country who received this. Officer Philip Smith with the EPD, Godspeed, stay safe, and thanks for talking with us tonight. Hey, you're welcome anytime, Brad. Thanks for having me. All right. Eyewitness News at 9 returns in a moment.